Hey, I'm live. It's Sandy Rask. We're here in the Food 2.5 kitchen. Let's just give it a second. You know how this works. It's got to roll, and I need just a moment more. And it looks like, it looks like I'm live. So, hello, I'm Sandy Rask, and this is the Food 2.5 Kitchen. And I'm so thrilled to be here with you. The Food 2.5 Kitchen has finally come home. Um, I'm sad to not have um, Doug and Kim here this evening with me, or to be in their beautiful kitchen, but it always feels good to be home. Um, we're going to do a really, really simple menu today, and it's one of my favorites. Um, we're going to do a shepherd's pie tonight, but it's actually going to be shepherdless. Um, so it should be a really, really good, um, a good meal. We're going to uh, make all of our plant-powered friends very happy this evening. So when I think about shepherd's pie, um, what normally happens is that, um, you know, you've got a layer underneath that's kind of the meat and vegetables with a little bit of um, au jus with it. Hey, John Clark. So nice to see you. This is great having you on. <gasps> oh, here we go. Hi, Christina. So nice to see you. I am, I'm so, so happy to be, um, to be back in, in my own kitchen and cooking for you guys this evening. Um, as I was just saying, it's a, a shepherdless pie tonight, um, sometimes known as a farmer's, um, a farmer's pie. So the, the shepherd's pie is meat with vegetables and kind of a light au jus, and then it's got mashed potatoes on top of it. Um, and it's meant to be a really hearty meal. Um, most of the, the European countries have, um, have done their version of, of shepherd's pies. Sonia, hello! Hi to Australia. Thank you so much. I don't know what time of day it is there, but it, it has got to be a little bit flip-flopped from, um, from our 5 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, but the, um, the idea of the shepherd's pie is a really hearty dish in cold weather. It was The potatoes were added to it to make it very budget-friendly. Um, and so now what we want to do is, um, hey Jane Ross, nice to see you. We want to give Shepherd's Pie just a bit of a remake and bring it into um, our current way of thinking and eating. So I'm doing a Shepherdless Pie, which tonight my underlayer, and these are flavors that you're all going to be familiar with because when I tend to go vegetarian, I, I have a couple of base things that I love and I that I, are my go-tos. But my meat section tonight is going to be quinoa and black beans with some veggies that have been um, that, have been, that have been cooked with the quinoa and then the potato layer is going to be sweet potatoes instead of um, instead of white potatoes so we're going to lighten up the the potato section add a bunch more nutrients in it the 2.5 way and then um, for a topping I just because I, you know, I've been away for several days. I haven't had a chance to uh, to get my Amazon order in yet, um, and so I was kind of cooking from what I had in the um, in the fridge. And so the topping tonight is I'm doing some grilled pineapple. I had that in there, so as I started thinking about this quinoa, black bean, sweet potato kind of shepherdless pie that we're doing, I thought what would be really good is if we took the the spices, the flavor profile, into the land of curry. Um, because there actually is a dish called tiffin, and please correct me if I don't have the, the pronunciation correct, but T-I-F-F-N. I couldn't think of any other way that you would have to say it. But tiffin is the um, the Indian equivalent of a shepherdless pie. Um, so I thought this was kind of, kind of a, a perfect way to do it. And of course, in order for us to be done in about 20 minutes, um, I have gotten a couple of things done ahead of time, but it shouldn't surprise you. They should actually be really super familiar. And so let me walk through what I did. Um, you can see in the back, I have out um, a pressure cooker. So I cooked the black beans. I had a, I had a pound of black beans sitting in the cupboard. Um, and I had a, you know, I had a few onions and I had, um, I had some stock. And so I cooked, um, I cooked a pound of black beans. We're going to use a, you know, a cup, one to two cups. And then, um, the rest I'll put into some soup that I, um, that I make tomorrow. But the, um, if you wanted to substitute in a can of, um, low sodium black beans, by all means do so. But you know me, if I can, um, if I can make it from scratch, I can do it less expensive with more flavor and, um, and, and a few less calories, um, because there, I know all of the ingredients that are in it. Um, so when I did the, the, what I started with was a very large onion that I diced up. I started it in this pan, actually, you know, my favorite one, 
you're going to see I've got quinoa in there. We'll talk about that in a second. But I started with a big onion, half of which went to the um, black beans and half went to the um, quinoa. And what I did was cook that onion in a little bit of avocado oil. Um, and I added in, I added in four spices. Again, they're all going to look really familiar to you. So I started with these two. I started with curry and ancho chili powder because this is a really, oops, this is a really mild curry. Um, and so I wanted the ancho chili powder to give it a little more smokiness and a little more spice. And then, actually what I wanted was my smoked paprika, but I left it at Doug and Kim's house. So Doug and Kim, if you're watching this, please put the smoked paprika to good use. <laughs> Don't wait for me to come back. Just use it all. Um, and then I used this, I put some smoky, smoky turmeric in it. Again, one of my favorites. I love that smokiness, especially with the curry. And I went to my go-to um, garlic, um, the tube garlic, because this is, what is this? This is midweek cooking. So we've got to be fast and efficient about it. So I got the onion sauteed and I, I put a ton of the spices into it. Then what I did was take half that onion, put it in the Instapot, and leave half of the onion here. So then in the Instapot, I put black beans and I put some, um, some really, really good stock. Now, if you remember, what I used tonight was, let me get it up close, hold on. Better than bouillon sauteed onion. Okay, so this, I'm so happy. So better than bouillon, I, I've always loved the flavor of it, but I've not ever liked the ingredients in it. It has flavors, it has natural flavors, it has maltodextrin. Um, and those were just like off the top. Um, I'm sure there's more underneath it, which totally wouldn't have made me happy. But this, this one with sauteed, this sauteed onion stock is really, really quite good. The, the ingredient list is quite short. Let's just see sauteed onion it does have some sugars in it um, here, let me just take that down it has some sugar in it it's got water it's got a few other things it's got like a yeast extract but the list is like I said it's very short so again for a midweek just to make some black beans in, I used about a tablespoon of this in eight cups of water I used the onions with the spices black beans and I let the instapot do its thing so I have to say, I was not, I'm not a fan of having a ton of equipment in the kitchen, but the Instapot is kind of my favorite. Um, it's a great, um, it's a great option. So I've got that. Then what I've got is I've made some, um, I've made some quinoa, kind of the same way. Um, I took that second half of the onion, all those spices, I added to it some carrots, and I did my midweek swap. I put shredded carrots in, then once that saute, then I put the quinoa in and, yeah, you guessed it, more bouillon, okay? So now I've got the two things that are going into the base, cooking it with the same ingredients, and that's what you want. They're getting the same flavoring, so you're going to get it kind of like all meshed together. So now what we're going to do to create that, that first layer of the, um, of the shepherdless pie, the farmer's pie, is we're going to add black beans to the, to the quinoa. So let me do that. And there's no science to this. I'm just going to keep adding black beans and black and the black bean juice until I feel like we've got the right the right consistency. All right. Before I do that one, let's just see. Let's take a check. Oh, here we go. Let's take a check and see. Do you know how I feel about my hash marks? Oh, okay. Hang on. You got to see. I know I've done this before, but look at these. Look at how beautiful this pineapple is going to be. That's going to sit right on top of these um, these shepherdless pies that are curry spice. Oh my goodness! All right. Before I get to the black beans, let me just say you guys know these pans, but let me just say it in case you're new to the to the show. This is stock. It's cast iron on the inside. It's enamel on the outside. It's Sincerely, one of my favorite pans. Um, even if I didn't say that, if you watched enough of my episodes, you would see that this is my go-to everyday pan. I love that it's shallow, but it's got a little bit of a lip, so if there's anything liquid I want to do, this is the pan I go to. It's got that nice finish on the inside. It browns things beautifully, so if I'm doing anything from um, sauteing fish to making a, you know, a, a coconut curry, it goes into this pan. Then this one is the Le Creuset Grill Pan. It's the it's a cute one. It's the little 10 inch. Um, 
for the even when I had a, a family of four that I was feeding, um, that pan is is perfect. Four little burgers fit perfectly on on this one. So it's it's another one of those like it comes out most nights, and it's just I don't have to go out to the barbecue to get those those beautiful grill marks that I love. Um, so then, all right. So now we're going to put some black beans into the quinoa. So let me move. Let me move this over to this side. Let's just see if you can still see it. Yes. Um, just so I don't I don't drizzle too badly. But let's let's get let's get this so we can see. I'm going to show you these beans. Because seriously, for I think that pot, the Instapot was maybe seventy five dollars. I'd have to look. I'll look at it and figure out which one that I bought. But it's that actually was a cast off. It was. My, uh, my youngest son wanted to be able to make rice in a rice cooker and I got him an Instapot and then he moved to a place where he couldn't have, have the Instapot with him. So I, I put that one back into my household. <laughs> but, um, but here we go. Those are the black beans. These are so much nicer. If you get a chance to make your own beans, um, it makes a huge difference. You don't get that slime that you get when you're, um, when you're using um, the canned beans. But, you know, no, no offense to canned beans. You know, you do... You do what you need to do to, to get a, a good nutritious dinner on the table. All right, so I'm going for scoop number three, and I may, I may end up using some more than that, but let's just see. Oh my gosh, look at This is so beautiful, but just this. Okay, let me put a few more, a few more black beans into that, because I just want it to be about 50-50. Beans to, uh, and I'm using a little bit of the juice, the au jus. From the, uh, from the black bean so that we've got a little, oh yeah. Okay, so let me get this up there so you can see it. All right, look at that. You guys, this is hot and ready to go. That's beans, oh, I'm just gonna take a bite, okay? Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, and we're gonna put this in my bowl, okay? Just know I took that bite, put it into my bowl. Um, we, um, we did those curry spiced vegetables to start. So by the time they get to the quinoa and the beans, it's so nice and subtle. It's just that little bit of like, you go, what is that? It's warm, it's earthy, but it doesn't, it's not that smack you in the face curry chicken salad, right? All right. So bottom layer done. Pineapple. I'm going to turn this off because those are done. Um, the last thing I've got to show you. And then it's just all assembly from here. We're maybe, maybe 10 minutes if I talk a lot um, to the end of dinner. All right, so now what I've got are six sweet potatoes that I've roasted. Again, I think I've done this for you before, but let's just walk through what I did. I have, here, let me just see, let me say some more highs before I get to this. Hey, Jane Ross, so nice to see Shannon, so nice to see you, Rhonda. I'm loving all these names. This is great. I love seeing all the same people coming back. You guys make me so happy. Donna, so nice to see you. Jennifer, nice to see you. Lena, how are you doing? Vicki, hi, how are you? So good to see you. Annette, so happy to see you in here. Mandy, oh my gosh. Carla, Cynthia, fantastic. All right. I got all my friends that love um, that love their veggies on on screen tonight. This is so great. All right, so we have quinoa, and black beans, pineapple. The in between layer is going to be sweet potatoes. So what I did with these, and again, I did it while I was around and I was working. I was taking conference calls. Um, I had the oven going at 425. I just rubbed this with the smallest amount of coconut oil, just enough to kind of kind of get it going. Put sea salt on it, poked a few holes, and then let it go for almost an hour almost an hour at 425. Let me just show you. Look at this. And these cool. So this was done a couple hours ago. So I don't have to uh, worry about it. It's not hot. But look at this. The skin just literally peels off. Now in some cases, I like the skin and a lot of the vitamins are in the skin. But I have two family members that aren't too, um, aren't too crazy about skin. So I'm going to go ahead and peel the skin off. Um, but I'm going to keep it aside because I think I'm still going to put a little bit on top of mine and eat it because this is this gets kind of crispy. So what you want to do, and why I like 425 for sweet potatoes, is that you um, you actually want them to almost ooze black. Because um, that means that what you've done is caramelize all the sugars inside, evaporate some of the moisture, the you know, the, the um, liquid, 
and concentrate it into the sweetest thing. And then you don't have to put anything in it. And look at this, like I've, I've got my hands. <laughs> this is finger food, it's like playing with Play-Doh. That's the easiest way, you don't have to dirty another dish. I can wash my hands easily. So here we go, number three. I've got, I've got five here that I put into, the, um, put into the oven. So what I don't use in the shepherd's pies, I'll tell you a secret, my favorite breakfast, when I have breakfast, because I don't have it very often. <laughs> I tend to be a coffee and go kind of person and not eat till noon. Probably not the best habit I have, but it's, it's the way I've, I've always eaten. But my favorite when I have breakfast is to warm one of these up with, um, with blackberries on it. You've probably seen it on the, um, the Food 2.5 site. It's so good. Um, and this, these sweet potatoes make this dish so totally, you know, Food 2.5 happy. Um, twice the flavor, half the calories. Because um, I don't have to doctor these at all. This is not like a, um, a white potato where I'd have to then start putting some stuff into it to, uh, to give it flavor and to, you know, and to soften it up. This is gonna, I could literally put salt on this and just eat it. I'm gonna go ahead and do this last one. Just cause I'm here and my hands are dirty. <laughs> I've got gotcha. oh. oh my gosh, Carla, are you having internet problems now? Sometimes this time of day I find when everyone's kind of starting to get home, I don't know what it is. Maybe the kids are starting to play games in the neighborhood now that, that their electronic school is over. But, uh, but this time of day can be a little tough for, for internet. If I had to clock my speed right now, I probably would be a little unhappy. All right, so let me just put my hands on this for just a second more, and then I'll show you what it looks like, because all I'm doing is, is playing with it like it's Play-Doh, okay? All right, I'm gonna wash my hands. I really, really miss having, having the kitchen help. It was so much fun. I hope you guys enjoyed having um, Kim and Doug they were terrific sports. I mean, they seriously let me just walk into their kitchen and, and hop into their fridge. I'm, I'm truly, I'm truly grateful to have them in my lives, uh, in my life, them in my life. <laughs> all right, so sweet potatoes, we're now done, okay? So we have all layers. Now what we're gonna do, let me just spin this a little bit and come down just a little bit so you can see. I decided what I was gonna do tonight, I love having these ramekins. Um, I have a couple of different sizes. I have white ones and I have red ones, and I think we have like some blue ones up there. I'll have to I'll have to look and and see all that we have. Um, but I love having single serving. This makes it so easy because I can go. All right, I think I have enough to make about eight servings, which will get the three of us tonight. And then this is um, I've got a couple lunches for the week, and all I have to do is pop this out, and these ramekins go in the microwave. So um, so this to me is the is kind of the, the easiest approach to um you know to feeding myself well during the week so this is what we're going to do okay bottom layer this is your shepherdless part of this shepherd's pie it's that curried quinoa and, and black beans okay i put those beautiful carrots i could have put even more more veggies into this if i had grocery shopped i probably would have put like bell peppers in this I would have put some greens into this. Kale would be just gorgeous in this, but look at that. See, actually, let's see. See if I can get, there we go. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I haven't even got the other two layers in yet. Um, put more beans. All right, so being straight up about this, I only had four pieces of pineapple. I didn't have eight, so not all of these are gonna get pineapple. But as it turns out, my son was not a believer in the pineapple should be on my shepherdless pie um, approach. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, leave a couple of them without the pineapple because, you know, I wouldn't want to wouldn't want to waste it on him honestly because he's he loves pineapple. But he was like, he goes, Mom, pineapple and, and pizza don't go along neither do the shepherd pies. So yeah, whatever. You know what? Each to their own. That's the um, that's kind of the cool thing of of making food in layers like this, is you can customize the layers to everybody in the family. Okay, you see what I'm doing? I'm kind of balancing out the plates, making sure that I've got eight, and they're all about the same, since I, I kind of overdid a couple of them. Okay, this is, this is as sophisticated as it gets. Um, next is, the next layer is the sweet potatoes. I'm gonna taste it, 
And I have two things that I can put into the sweet potatoes to kind of make it go with this. Um, I'm definitely putting salt in and a little bit of pepper because so far they have nothing in them. So here's uh, one sprinkle. This is, this is five sweet potatoes, so we're going to put two sprinkles in. So you can see, right? And, um, and what's our proportion of, of salt and pepper? Oops, that's not pepper, that's black salt. Let's go, let's go one more. There we go. We have to um, equal, at least I do, I equal the salt with the pepper. Okay, so we've got pepper in there. Then, um, the other thing that I've got here, and this was, this was some leftover coconut milk. So I'm going to, just because this has curry um, in here, I'm going to put just a little bit, I mean, I'm talking about, you know, like maybe, maybe a tablespoon, maybe two. Just, and it's not going to be enough to give it a ton of flavor or a ton of calories. It's just going to give it enough so that it has that coconut scent. It kind of feels like it belongs with the, um, with the curry spice. That's it. That's all I'm doing, okay? So you can see there's a little bit, you can barely see that there's any coconut milk in there. I didn't put a ton. You could put more if you like, but look at, you can see. See how creamy this gets? Oh, that's perfect, absolutely perfect. And I love you get just a hint of that, uh, of the coconut curry. All right, so we're gonna do this. Then we're gonna pop them in the oven for just a little bit to uh, warm up, because this sweet potato is not all that warm. So. We'll probably eat in an hour or so. It won't take an hour to warm this up, but right before I, um, right before we're ready to eat, I'm gonna go ahead and put um, put them in the oven, warm them up. Look at how cute these are. So everyone's gonna get about oh a third to a half of a sweet potato. You know what's nice is they have tons of these ramekins out there. And they're not expensive, and you can get them on my favorite Amazon. Um, and when they don't have stuff in them, they stack beautifully like this, right? So storage of them is, is really nice. And I just keep saran wrap around to, to put on top. Um, and they make kind of perfect little individual servings. I just love this. I'm going to get eight of these done, and I'm still going to have some sweet potatoes left over for my, for my berry breakfast. All right, doesn't this feel fallish? I'm like looking at these colors thinking this could be, this could be a bunch of different things. You could put spaghetti squash on top in place of these sweet potatoes too if you liked it better. Um, you could put chunks of, um, of acorn squash down in that quinoa instead of black beans. You could put mushrooms, they would be so good. Or you could do um, Italian squash down in there. You could do some, um, gosh, you could do some eggplant across the top. So I'm starting to develop um, some recipes, some five by recipes that uh, I think will be very cool. Um, when you look at a recipe like this, like shepherd's pie, I like to think of it as a plan. It has a plan of, of three layers. What do I put in the first layer? What do I put in the second? What do I put in the third? But there are no rules to it. There's just some flavor profiles that I, that I tend to follow. Um, so I can take just about any any recipe, and comfort food is the best to do it with, and convert it into about, oh, anywhere from five to a dozen dishes without thinking real hard by changing the spice profile, by changing the vegetables that are in it, by changing the kind of meat that we use, maybe the ethnicity that we tend to follow for, um, for some bigger profiles. Um, that's it. All right. One more hand wash. Layer two is done. Now let me just show you what these cute little, these cute little pineapples look like on top. Oh, look it. Okay, you can see them up close. Sometimes I get cross hatches, but I could tell I wasn't gonna pay enough attention tonight. <laughs> these look so cute. These little pineapple circles are the perfect size for these, uh, for these ramekins. And that's a lot of pineapple. So it seems like uh, my Amazon, my Amazon uh, warehouse or wherever this came from, whether it was Whole Foods or Amazon, I can't remember. Um, their cutter is getting a little bit bad because the last couple times we've gotten the cut pineapple, the 
the center hasn't come out and the you know they've been a little cockeyed so I think they need to oil their machinery but this is it this is shepherdless pie um, and it's finished with a, a really cool grilled grilled pineapple on top let me take one more bite and I'll tell you about about the spices that I'm tasting let's try it let's try this one I won't try and get a, a piece of pineapple in there oh gosh all right so you can see the bite I'm gonna take it has a little bit of everything except for the pineapple but it has like a little oh well, here let's get a little pineapple juice onto the spoon <laughs> So I know I've done burgers before with this combination. I've done meatballs, I've done sliders. I sincerely love sweet potatoes, black beans, and quinoa together. I think it's the perfect shepherdless pie because it has quinoa in it. The quinoa is has nine amino acids, which means it's a perfect, perfect protein. Um, I love the lightness of the sweet potatoes. I love that just that minor league touch of, of coconut inside the sweet potatoes. And with the juice from the pineapple, mm, it's it's gorge. So thank you so much. I wanna I wanna finish this evening because I'm I'm done cooking now and this is this is great. But I wanna finish with a thank you to all of you. Um, I've seen my site grow amazingly. I've got almost 900 followers now, and it's all you guys. So I just want to say thank you and I appreciate you. And this has been a great time cooking with you. And come back and if you like what you see. Share me with friends, okay? So have a great night. Thank you so much. Mwah. Go have a great dinner yourselves and try our shepherdless pie, okay? <laughs> night now.